What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLP and FINRA SAG. And uh, on today's video I will show you the latest news directly related to our story. I will start with the news that uh, I didn't mention uh, in my yesterday's video because of uh, the lack of uh, time. Then I will continue with the saga of uh, Charles Gasparina tweet and uh, the response uh, from Mark Basil. On top of that, uh, I will show you an amazing news directly related to the letter, or bipartisan open letter from Congress. And I will show you a new educational source uh, for the journalists. So, and before we dive deep into all of this, I kindly ask you to hit the like button. This is the easiest way how uh, you can uh, push uh, this video forward to the broader audience and eventually it will help us to win this battle. So, let's start with the news. Uh, yesterday, Richard Hoffman uh, posted this tweet and he wrote 29th filing tonight in my finger controlled arbitration. Today's episode, director justifiably get rid of uh, this arbitration panel for various reasons, which are not complimentary about the panel members. Stay tuned. And he also uh, published uh, a new video, uh, which is explains uh, uh, the situation around uh, his arbitration. And it is about 16 and a half minutes long video, where he explains in the simple uh, terms uh, the current situation in his arbitration. And I have to say that uh, he's done a lot of uh, work, he filed a lot of motions, uh, and uh, unfortunately all of them were dismissed uh, by the arbiters. And that is why he asked to dismiss uh, this panel, because uh, of uh, the confirmation bias of uh, these people, and basically uh, with the denials, uh, this panel didn't explain uh, their intention and basically why did they do it. That is why Richard is still fighting and uh, he is uh, sending this information to the federal court as well in order to stay in line with all the rules uh, and uh, laws. And uh, I think uh, he will win this uh, his local battle and eventually it will help us uh, to win our battle, the bigger battle uh, of MMTLP community. So. Let me show you another very important news. Uh, Anna Trades wrote this tweet uh, just several hours ago. She said, MTLP, breaking news, amazing opportunity. We were granted time for supplemental congressional signatures onto Ralph Norman's MTLP open letter. This is our most important call to action. Continue reaching out to your representatives uh, in the House and uh, the Senate to get a commitment and if they don't agree, please ask them to respond in writing why they will not seek the truth and transparency for their constituents. Please take action. And guys, this is a very important step uh, because we have an additional time uh, to uh, add more signatures uh, to this letter that uh, was uh, issued uh, on December 22nd and that was signed uh, by 74 Congress members. And uh, this uh, letter has 16 questions. I made a thorough video uh, in regards to this letter and you can watch it in uh, the list, in the playlist uh, on my YouTube channel. And guys, this uh, might be one of the paths uh, how we can solve this problem. So, and uh, let me show you this news. Yesterday I showed you this uh, tweet that was written by Charles Gasparina and he said, now that the AMC apes idiotic theory about a soaring AMC stock price has completely evaporated, morons like these are obsessed with another stock. Only this one is actually delisted. It's called MMTLP. Further proof that uh, the mind virus of dopey delusional stock pumping get, uh, gets worse over time. And uh, Mark Basile responded to uh, this person and he asked him uh, for a short meeting where he could explain him uh, all the details uh, about uh, this situation. And uh, let me show you what uh, did Mark respond to him uh, uh, just uh, several hours ago. 17 hours ago, Mark Basile wrote, MMTLP, even if uh, retail investors were duped by what they heard in public about a squeeze or any other assertion, that uh, has nothing to do with FINRAS and the SEC's failures to provide full transparency as uh, well as provide all data 
relevant to share count, broker activity, etc. At the very least to Congress, had the December 2022 FOIA request not revealed an inter-agency email that both agencies uh, thought uh, what, there was uh, some fraud going on and blue-sheeted the brokers, not the issuers. Then maybe there would uh, be a nothing burger, but there are way too many actual facts uh, that indicated some level of potential massive fraud against more than 65,000 everyday people and households. And uh, on top of that, uh, Mark wrote this tweet just 10 hours ago. MMTLP, it was an interesting conversation with Charles Gasparino. And uh, it happened, guys, as you can see, it happened. Uh, for your information, I would get questions uh, from my law students uh, that tried driving my answers towards something they know a lot about, but not necessarily on topic. Charles knows and understands the pump and dump game probably better than most. And I agreed with him, there may have been some of uh, that going on. But uh, if indeed we both agreed, it may not have developed from retail. Let that sink uh, in for a moment. It definitely confirmed to me that he's open uh, to looking all at all possibilities. I sent him a timeline which uh, was uh, much more detailed than uh, what we were able to discuss. But uh, his questions are your questions. How did uh, this get traded and what was the impetus uh, of the youth recall? This is a very complicated and uh, convoluted series of unfortunate events that takes time to understand. We agreed to continue our discussions. That's a good thing for the community. And uh, definitely it is a good thing because Mark can explain a lot uh, from his experience and from his point of view. And we know that his point of view is pretty much the point of view of entire MMTLB community. That is why we have to relax and I think it is not a problem anymore. And let me show you what Charles Gasparina wrote in his tweet. Just had an interesting convo with Mark Basile on MMTLP. One question we both have. How does FINRA list something without the company's approval? The delisting was also strange, but that came when there was lots of pumping for a short squeeze, which as we know didn't occur. Wild stuff. My 3k foot view remains. Chasing short squeeze uh, is a surefire way of losing lots of money. Just ask uh, uh, the AMC apes. And in general, I agree, it is very risky to chase uh, for the short squeezes because we don't know where will be the next one and how high it might go. No one, no one can predict this. But in general, I have to say that his previous statement was uh, much uh, more aggressive than the latest one. This means uh, I think it is a very good uh, step towards the resolution and I think Charles Gasparina is not uh, our enemy anymore. And let me show you the response uh, from uh, uh, Syntax Queen of the Metaverse in regards uh, to the short squeeze uh, rush. Uh, she wrote, uh, Charles Gasparina, I never purchased MMTLP and received my 14,000 shares in the Torchlight Metamaterials merger. I believe that the options clearing helped uh, make it so shorts wouldn't need to close their position in the merger. This transferred liabilities into both MMAT and the dividend placeholder that uh, would become MMTLP. And guys, it is 100% uh, correct that a lot of people who hold the MMTLP shares didn't buy any shares of uh, this company. They have these shares through the merger of Torchlight and Metamaterials. And uh, that is why this statement of Charles Gasparina, where he said that it, it is a chasing of for the short squeezes, it's uh, not a case, in our case at least. And this is a very important part. So, let me show you another quite interesting uh, update from Hollywood Henry. Uh, he is the person uh, who sent a lot of physical letters to all the Congress members and basically who helped uh, the community to achieve our results as well. And he wrote this. We just launched a new page on fair markets to educate journalists, uh, media outlets and the investing public about MMTLP and its significance to them. And uh, this update is very important because with this update uh, probably we will not see uh, any more so-called journalists that uh, make uh, a hit piece articles. And let me remind you that we have several of them 
Uh, James J. Angel is not an actual journalist, but he also made a lot of bad things in regards to MMHLP community. But Alexander Osipovich uh, and Brandon Kochkodin are the people who uh, wrote a lot of articles in regards to MMTLP. Uh, and basically these uh, articles uh, is nothing else uh, than just a hit piece articles. And bro Brandon Kochkodin should be testified uh, in Richard Hoffman's arbitration because infidelity's uh, opposition one of the main lines of defense is the hit piece article that was written by Brandon Koshkodin in Forbes uh, just several months ago. And it is absolute nonsense when uh, the company is trying to defend themselves through the article. So, I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel with notification bell. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, 